How's it going, guys? We have a difficult question for cardio slash biochem, okay, in terms of ion regulation. It's on the NBME exams for step one, okay? Not me trying to be fancy. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below, and I'll start the clip. So dude has a heart attack, and the question just wants to know, Compared to healthy myocardium, in his myocardium, what do we expect for the combination of ion concentrations, okay? As I prefaced with, it's a difficult question. So I can tell you straight up that the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the sodium potassium. Calcium is the hardest and it comes last, okay? So in a heart attack, we obviously have decreased oxygenation of the tissue. And sodium potassium ATPase pumps, well, if we have decreased oxygen utilization, we're gonna have decreased ATP production. And therefore, the sodium potassium ATPase pumps, we can't get sodium out of the cell and we can't get potassium into the cell. It's a high yield general principle for USMLE that you know that sodium potassium ATPase pumps almost always are uh, effluxing three sodium ions from the cell and influxing two potassium ions into the cell. So one, two, three. For every one ATP utilized, it's two potassium in, three sodium out, okay? So we can't do that here. So therefore, intracellular sodium should be increased because we can't get it out of the cell. And likewise, Potassium should be decreased because we can't get it into the cell. Okay, so we know we're dealing with answers C or D already. That's the easy part. Okay, and we say, well, what about calcium though? That's a bit hard. Okay, now this comes down to knowing that there's also a sodium calcium ATPase pump on myocardium, where three sodium are going to go into the cell and one calcium goes out of the cell. Okay, so just chilling out for two seconds. We just fucking said that if we can't get sodium out of the cell, we can't get potassium into the cell, we know sodium's gonna build up in the cell. Well, that's going to disfavor. We're not going to want to bring more sodium into the cell if it's already high in the cell. So the sodium calcium antiporter, three sodium in for one calcium out, we're not going to want that active in this case. So it's gonna have decreased activity. So less sodium is gonna come into the cell, less calcium goes out of the cell via that ATP as alone, okay? It's more minor, but via that ATP as alone, calcium's not gonna leave the cell. Calcium will build up in the cell. So our answer is choice C here. Now, this is a notable question because this is exactly the same as what digoxin does. Okay, so there's two approaches. You can just, as I already did in this question, we say decrease oxygenation, decreased ATP, etc. Makes sense, but you should also know that digoxin blocks the sodium potassium ATPase pump on myocardium. Okay, and so calcium, and that's the mechanism for why calcium ultimately builds up in the cell with digoxin and we get increased contractility. So this combination of arrows, uh, interestingly, I don't believe I have my high yield arrows PDF. I, I'll add to it in time. I think it's important considering this is on the NBME exam, as I fucking said. So this combination of arrows, I want you to know for a decreased oxygenation of myocardium, as well as the effect of digoxin. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.